Hi, good evening YouTube. Today I am going to talk about something interesting I found at my office. And it's this thing right here. This is a PL mount Super 35 18 to 50 millimeter T3 cinema lens that originally came with the red one that, uh, when it first came out. So this is a pretty old lens. I never thought I'd have any use for it. And one thing that I found interesting is the lens covers is Angin, how do you spell? Angino, Angino, Angino. You know, the, uh, the maker that makes the Optimos. But it is a red branded lens, if you look here. Oh, it's actually 2.8, although it only says 3, but anyway. And then, the other thing is, I was just doing a job with a pretty well-known DP in Japan, who requested to... What was it? Uh, it, was a, it was a strange configuration. I got a request equipment request list that had uh, PL mount lenses on a Sony E mount. <clears throat> and I did some research and I rented out the Metabones PL mount to, well, E mount, E mount to PL mount, PL mount to E mount, whatever uh, adapter. What it pretty much is, is, you know, this size E mount goes on your Sony camera and on this side, you can attach your PL mount cinema lens. And I thought that was an interesting prospect, so I just bought one myself. And next thing so I did is uh, I gotta get this alignment right. So this is gonna be roughly here. Man, these sim lenses are so heavy duty. Okay. So I've got the. This thing is pretty darn heavy. And I put it on my Sony A7 IV. to take a few test shots to see what things would look like, which you can see here as I talk. Okay. So when you put this lens on, it's, it's really so heavy that I'm afraid that it's gonna damage the uh, mount on the camera. So I ended up having to together this rig to support the weight of the lens. Okay, here we go. And so now you might be thinking, what the hell is this abomination that I've come up with? What I did was, um, do, I, I wanted to do a comparison. So first I took the A7 IV with this PL mount cine lens on and it's a th Super 35 lens. So I had to go and I put the camera in APS-C crop mode and that pretty much is the same size as a Super 35. Uh, well, close enough, I'd say. Oh, the cine lens. I need. The, oh, can you see this here? Oh, this follow fo This follow focus is very necessary. So I came up with this. Oh my God! It's so heavy. This contraption here, where I can film, or not film. I'm just gonna take still photos because. As a one-man band, I don't think I can handle motion picture with this, oh, heaviness. So I rigged 
my ZV-E1 on top of my A7 IV and here I've got the Sony G18-105 to and this is an APS-C lens put on a full frame sensor ZV-E1 and again this one is also in uh, APS-C crop mode I know it's not an apples apples oranges to oranges comparison but it's the best I can do for now I don't want to be outside swapping lenses all the time but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to match the focal lengths uh, the settings as best as possible of both of these cameras and shoot a bunch of photographs and see what the differences are whoa man how <laughs> wow this thing is really heavy. Damn, should I put a top hand? If I put a handle on it, nah, I guess I just have to carry it like this. Okay. So I'm going to go out to do some photography to see if the cell lenses are really that amazing. Before going out with the double camera contraption, I went out with just the cine lens and I was noticing that it's nice but something was wrong and I realized I couldn't reach focus in infinity focus you see how all these uh, shots are just blurred when I try to focus to infinity so I was trying to find a way to DIY myself out of this inability to focus to infinity using the Metabones PL mount adapter. There weren't specific information on this one. However, on other models, it was recommended to increase the distance between the sensor and the end of the lens. So I thought, okay, see these screws here, these tiny, I don't know if I can focus on them using this tiny little Allen wrench to take these screws off and so I can disassemble this. Now the issue is it's not the best way to do this but I'm thinking of making me putting some gaffer tape here and creating a little bit of extra space between the inner glass and the sensor. See if that works. Well, let's see if this works now. that do it? No, that's not 20 feet. I gotta aim for something a lot farther away. So after this DIY fix, I took out the double camera rig to do a comparison shoot, and to my dismay, the problem just got worse. And you can see that I could kind of get away with things by closing the aperture, but yeah just isn't working. You'll see this shot. If I'm on a closer shot, yes, it's in focus, but if I can't focus to infinity, it's kind of useless. So I look at the results of the test shoot and I'm so bummed out and I've got a real bad spoiler alert. <laughs> Sorry to everyone that's watched this far, but I realized it was really simple. Because this lens had been lying around since the release of the Red One, I don't know, that's like, what, 10, 15 years ago? It's just that the uh, rings, the focus ring, was just kind of stuck. I realized, if you can't even see it here, 
So the focus would go to it. Where's so here's the mark. Let's see, the focus would go to around here. And I was like, wait, hold on a second. It's wait, like somewhere like around here. And I noticed, wait, hold on. It's, it's not actually going to infinity. And all I had to do was kind of just push it, like force it a little bit. And then once it like got over this, I don't know, I don't know what it was. This little like something that was like blocking it. Now it's totally smooth. The aperture ring is smooth. The zoom, smooth. And so is the focus. So le my lesson learned is that, especially if using an old lens that hasn't been used for a long time, um, I don't know, am I supposed to put some like, uh, I guess I'll do some research on how to maintain lenses whether it's some uh, grease or UB40, whatever it is, just uh, turn the turn the rings all the way. Make sure it goes all the way. Make sure it's smooth. And it took me days and multiple nights out doing these test photography shoots to realize all it was was a stuck focus ring. <laughs> Thank you for watching.